Hi YouTube, this video is going to be on carry guns and what I consider to be the best carry gun. The Glock 33 is my choice primary carry gun. Over the next few minutes I will explain how I came to carry the Glock 33 and the guns and experiences that led me to make this choice. The first hand guns I carried were the Breda 92 and the SIG 226. Those guns impressed upon me the value of having 15 rounds of ammo in the gun. If the situation you were in turned ugly, you had enough firepower to break contact and move to cover and return fire in the magazine. So when it came time to get a personal carry gun, I chose the Beretta Cougar in 9mm. It was the perfect gun for carry, said the gun store salesman. So I carried it day in and day out for about a year. This was before the internet had really took off and you learned things word of mouth. Most of the guys I worked with had military or police backgrounds and were either fans of the Beretta or SIG and on the other side were the guys with the 1911s. Most carried backup guns in revolver form either in 38 Special or 357 Mag and used them as off-duty carry guns. I bought a Smith & Wesson Snub in 357 Mag. I would go to the range or train with some of the guys I worked with and I shot my revolver and Beretta side by side. I picked up some Winchester Ranger T 127 grain plus P plus ammo from a guy at work and it was supposed to be good to go. I also had some Federal 357 mag my dad gave me when I got the revolver. I noticed right off shooting these loads that the 9mm sounded just as powerful as the 357 mag. I thought, surely this can't be right, so I started testing the two rounds and guns against one another. I shot milk jugs filled with water, car doors, clay, wet phone books, hogs, and it was clear that the real world power of these guns were for all intents and purposes the same. Fast forward about a year and my primary carry is the 357 revolver. The bread is left in the truck because the area I work in now backup and police response are instantaneous. I get into a situation with this guy and he says he is not leaving the place I'm working security at. Well in the struggle to get him on his way I was slammed against the wall. No big deal. Everything looks fine. I check myself. Everything is in place. That weekend I go to the range or maybe the week after I can't remember. But something is wrong with my revolver. The cylinder will not rotate and the gun will not fire. I take it to the gunsmith and he says the clockwork is damaged or so he calls it. He shows me the problem and it's the part that rotates the cylinder. I said I thought revolvers never broke. He laughed and showed me a pile he had to fix and another pile he said for parts. I ask him what is the best sized carry gun comparable to my revolver. He lets me look at several compact semi-autos and the Glock 26 caught my eye. He said this one is great if you like plastic guns. He said really what I needed was a custom 45. He said it's more expensive but it's more indestructible than those plastic guns. But I got into a discussion with the store owner and he said Glocks were good to go and I could take his to the range next door and shoot a box of ammo through it. If I didn't like it, he would credit me the ammo and give me 10% off my next gun. I like the Glock 26. I picked it up new for $450 plus taxes. So I had 14 rounds on tap with one in the hole. I carried this for years. I shot the hell out of it. I subjected it to normal abuse, but still respected the power and track record of the 357 Magnum. the S&W MMP 340 ultra lightweight 357 Magnum revolver. It was so light you would forget it was on you. My friend bought one, got a great deal on it, and brought it to me to check it out. He liked my Glock 26 and a Glock 17 I had, so we traded. I plan to pick up a new Glock 27 and keep the revolver to marvel at its lightness and shoot 38 reloads at the range. Because it had recoil comparable to a 44 Magnum snub nose bear gun I shot one time. After 15 rounds of 357 Magnum, you were done with it for today. Your hand would hurt so bad that it would go numb. 
After a few weeks, my friend traded in my old 26 and got a Glock 33. 357 SIG was supposed to match the 357 Magnum in power and 4 inch and smaller barrels. When we looked this up, we found tests where the 4.5 inch 31, the 4 inch 32, and the 3.5 inch 33 matched the 357 Magnum in velocity. Through further testing, we got real world data to support the claim that the 357 SIG was equal to regular 357 Magnum and the same barrel length up to the 4 inch mark. This was important to me because I had witnessed 357 Magnum kill a lot of things dead right there. In other words, one and done. I trusted the 357 Magnum, it was proven, and the 357 SIG could match it in any reasonable carry gun size. But that wasn't all. The 357 SIG was better in two more ways. One, it came in a Glock, which by then was proven to be reliable, and ounce for ounce I would have to carry two MMP 340s to equal the firepower of one Glock 33. That is saying that I would want to shoot the 340 and trust my life again to something that could break by simply being smacked against the wall. Swap barrels and you have a 40 s and one of the most carried bullets by law enforcement. Swap again to a 9mm conversion barrel and magazine and you have the other. The Glock 33 will take 9, 10, 11, 13, and 15 round magazines. So you can tailor your backup magazine to suit your threat level in 357 Magnum and 40S and W. In 9mm it will take up to 17 round magazines. Having magazines are much faster than having any type of speed loaders and you have more capacity. Ammo can be found online to train with for $17 a box of 50. Most 357 SIG training ammo is loaded to 1250 feet per second, and most standard 357 SIG defensive ammo is around 1300, so training with it is great. Another option is to pick up a 40 or 9mm barrel and use that ammo, which is much cheaper, to run drills and train with. The hottest 357 SIG might damage your Glock 33 after 25 or 40,000 rounds, so you may need to change some parts after that. But in the real world, are you going to crank through 20,000 rounds of hot 357 SIG at a cost of more than a dollar a round? I don't think so. So there it is, guys. That's why I choose the Glock 33. Could I stay with a 9mm and a 40? Will they get the job done? Yes. But the Glock 33 chambered in 357 SIG provides the power of 357 Magnum and the capacity comparable to a 9mm with the strength of the Glock platform. Thanks. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, guys, just when you think life can't get any better, rotating meets.